Drones have become a secret weapon in the world of discoveries, turning ordinary people into archaeologists. Get ready to explore a lost kingdom in the mountains and New York's best-kept historical secret, the lost kingdom in the mountains. Archaeologists in Turkey uncovered the ruins of a phenomenal lost city using drones. The city, located high up the side of a mountain, is called Natunia. Up until now, Natunia had the same legendary status as other lost cities like Atlantis and El Dorado. Now that it's been discovered, experts are shocked that it looks like something straight out of a fantasy. Archaeologists always suspected that Natunia was a real place, but no one found any evidence of it. Several coins have been unearthed at various archaeological sites with the name Natunia on them, so it was surely somewhere that really existed. The issue was that researchers were never able to pinpoint its location. There was no evidence as to where the city minting all the coins once stood. Now that's all changed, thanks to Michael Brown from the archaeological department at Heidelberg University. He and his colleagues used drone mapping to identify the ruins of Natunia. This city is so magical, the experts have compared it to a famous location in Lord of the Rings. The area where the city stands is extremely rugged. It's a difficult place to poke around, kind of like doing an excavation on the side of Everest, though it's a bit warmer in this part of the world. Researchers use the drones to fly across the rocky terrain and collect images. When all of these images were processed, they were able to put together a map of the entire area. When looking at the map, they noticed artificial structures. They're kind of hard to see because the city is entirely in ruins with almost nothing standing. All the same, the evidence is there of its former glory. Natunia used to be a legitimate mountain fortress. The main perimeter wall is over two miles long. Michael Brown said the wall was once a mixture of towers and other structures molded against the very cliffs of the mountain. The place was integrated into the solid stone to utilize the natural defenses. Michael compared the city to Helm's Deep in The Lord of the Rings, where the heroes fight an epic battle against the evil orcs. Sadly, there is very little left inside the walls, but at one point there were enormous statues looking down over the valleys. Researchers think it was a pilgrimage destination, so it would have had epic altars and grand temples. Nobody knows exactly what happened to the mighty mountain fortress. It was occupied at least 2,000 years ago by followers of Zoroastrianism. At some point, the kingdom crumbled and was forgotten. The Ancient Henge in Ireland's Boyne Valley, a spell of dry weather and an incidental drone flight resulted in the discovery of a previously unknown monument. The monument was found in the middle of a field, looking like a forgotten crop circle. Photographer Anthony Murphy was the man with the drone who made the awesome discovery. He was flying his machine near the extremely popular site of Newgrange. Newgrange is one of the most famous prehistoric monuments in Ireland. It's a massive stone tomb that's been around for at least 5,000 years. Anthony was trying to get some good drone images when he found another megalithic monument. His drone spotted a perfect circle in an otherwise bland field. Anthony has been exploring this part of Ireland with a drone for years. He knows all the tombs, all the enclosures, and all the monuments. Anthony even runs his own history website, Mythical Ireland. He knows everything there is to know about the ancient landscape here. When he saw the circle, you can imagine his shock. He immediately took photographs and sent them to archaeologists. The experts confirmed that yes, the site is completely new. Anthony stumbled upon an ancient henge estimated at 4,500 years old. There isn't anything left of the henge to really study now. What Anthony spotted was more like a footprint in the muck than a fossil. In Neolithic times, people across Ireland and the United Kingdom built hundreds of similar structures out of timber. They would create huge circles using tree trunks and scraps of wood. These pieces of wood were left to rot, eventually leaving holes in the ground. The holes filled with organic material over time, leaving a footprint at the surface. The ancient imprint of this new structure was only revealed because the extreme drought withered the crops. And now for a quick break because it's shout-out time! I want to give a big thank you to Phipps312 and Detika Boyd for supporting this channel. Thank you so much! 
If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. The Abandoned Estate One of New York's best-kept secrets is a castle hugging the shores of the Hudson River. The castle is hidden in the forest of Polypel Island, making it a tough place to visit. If you can't explore it on foot, which is literally impossible since you have to cross the river to reach the island, you can always explore the castle using a drone. The little-known piece of American history is called Bannerman Castle. The island upon which the structure sits was once believed to be haunted by the Native American tribes who lived in the area. But the Americans weren't quite so superstitious. During the American Revolution, the island was used as a defensive station against the British fleet. Francis Bannerman was the man behind the construction of the castle in 1901. Francis Bannerman was born in Scotland, so he had grown up around beautiful Scottish castles. When he started building the castle on the island, he took inspiration from those ancient Scottish strongholds. Only this wouldn't be the seat of a Scottish king. Francis's castle was used for storing munitions because, well, the thing is, Francis was an early arms dealer. Francis Bannerman sold cannons to the US government during World War I, right up until his death in 1918. Then, in 1920, 200 pounds of shells exploded inside the structure by accident. A huge part of the castle was obliterated. It was the beginning of the end for the island's usefulness. Civilians weren't buying military weapons like they were before the war. Plus, with Francis gone, there wasn't anybody to protect the castle. Bannerman Castle continued to decline over the years. The final blow came in 1950 when the ferry boat that served the island sank in a storm. Bannerman was left abandoned until purchased by New York State in 1967. For such a tiny island, a place that's only 6.5 acres, its history is immense. In the 1960s, when the state took over the property, you could take a tour of the island. Tours only lasted for a year, though, because a random fire destroyed even more of the castle in 1969. The castle was made completely off-limits to the public. Since then, it's been vandalized relentlessly. It's honestly a miracle that any part of the castle is still standing. In 2015, Vincent Villafort and his fiancée kayaked to the island, and then Vincent's fiancé killed him. You can see it for yourself, but it's definitely safer to use a drone. The Desert Temple In Saudi Arabia, a temple from 8,000 years ago was just discovered in the desert. The amount of technology that went into finding the temple is nothing short of baffling. The multinational team of archaeologists used drones, but that's hardly it. They utilized ground control points, conducted a topographic survey, and used laser scanning and remote sensing. They also conducted ground-penetrating radar scans and completed a geophysical survey. This place was picked apart bit by bit using all the technology at their disposal. But the most crucial piece of tech was definitely the drones. The flying machines enabled researchers to get high-quality aerial images of the entire site. The temple is definitely the focal point of the discovery. It's a magnificent building made from stone. Fragments of an altar were discovered with all the telltale signs of ceremonies and rituals. People in the Saudi Arabian desert gathered at this place long before Judaism or Islam ever existed. They would have thrown their hands in the air and given praise to whatever mysterious desert deities they worshipped. The temple was only one part of the site, which is called al fa Researchers also identified about 3,000 graves. Secret Florida On a small island off the coast of Florida, archaeologists have found evidence that might change the history of the state. Explorers have revealed the presence of human life from 1,000 years ago. It's hard to imagine what the Gulf of Florida looked like 1,000 years ago. Without the towering skyscrapers in Miami or the paved roads moving through the swamp, Florida would have been a wild place. It was a dense jungle that swallowed entire crews of Spanish explorers in the 16th century. To be fair, Florida is still a wild place. In 1990, an archaeological site was identified on the island of Raleigh, but it was in such a thick tangle of jungle that nobody studied it until 2010. Even then, researchers hit a roadblock and gave up. 
The jungle was too hostile and the teams didn't have the proper equipment to do a good investigation. Drone technology has made it possible to study even the wildest places. Professor Ken Sassaman and his team from the University of Florida recently did a drone survey to investigate the island of Riley. They found the remains of 37 dwellings. That's a big number! The dwellings are part of a settlement that once covered a huge section of the island. Researchers said such a place is without parallel in the southeastern United States. It's blowing the minds of those involved in the study. All the evidence points to a civilization dominating the island a thousand years ago. There isn't any direct evidence to say who was living on the island. However, scientists who know the area's history have a very good guess. It's believed Riley was ruled by the Tocobaga Indians. They were known to live across the western coast of Florida from the 10th century until the arrival of the Spanish. When the Spanish arrived in Florida in 1528, they destroyed the Tocobaga population. Disease and violence completely wiped out the tribe. In under 100 years, they were extinct. The House of the Dead In a shocking new discovery, archaeologists found an enormous funerary structure on the Salisbury Plain containing a myriad of skeletons. Experts believe the burial chamber was used 5,700 years ago. It could contain some of the earliest known inhabitants of the British Isles. Salisbury Plain is where Stonehenge stands in England. It's a place covered almost entirely in farmland and long, sweeping fields. But 5,500 years ago and beyond, it was a landscape dominated by Neolithic humans. Great settlements arose from the flatlands, constructed by the builders of Stonehenge. And now, thanks to drone technology, archaeologists have found one of the most impressive ancient cemeteries constructed by the same people. Jim Leary, the director of archaeology at the University of Reading, called it a very rare type of monument. Jim said it's the first burial chamber of its kind excavated in Salisbury Plain within the last 50 years. Excavations only recently began thanks to the outline of the structure being identified in aerial footage. Just like the mystery circle in the field in Ireland, the footprint of the burial chamber was discovered in the middle of a field. Because the discovery is so new, we're all going to have to wait a bit before we learn more about it. As of right now, archaeologists think there could be up to 50 skeletons buried in the field. They may have been buried alongside cow skulls as part of a bizarre ancient ritual practiced by the Stonehenge builders. These were the first people in England to have domesticated cows. The animals were hugely important to their culture. What else do you think archaeologists will find here? Let me know what you think in the comments below and hit subscribe while you're at it. The Lost Log Boat Remember the Anthony Murphy guy from the beginning of the video? You know, the one who found the 4,500-year-old henge in the Irish field? Well, it wasn't his only discovery. Just check out what else he's found using his drones. Anthony found the Neolithic structure in 2018 with a drone. Then, in 2021, he discovered an ancient log boat in the River Boyne. Anthony flew his drone along the edge of the river, trying to catch sight of a bottlenose dolphin that had been witnessed by locals a few days earlier. What he hadn't expected to find was a strange rectangular piece of wood. It looked like a dugout canoe. The moment Anthony zoomed in on the mysterious boat while going through the footage, he knew he had a big discovery on his hands. In 2016, a similar wooden boat had been found in the same section of river. That one had turned out to be 5,000 years old. The boat Anthony found hasn't been dated yet. It could be ancient or it could be recent. Neolithic people used these types of canoes to travel across ancient rivers but they were also being carved in Ireland as recently as the 18th century. Ancient Mountain Paintings In the beautiful mountains of Spain, researchers made a groundbreaking discovery using drones. They identified remnants of human activity from 7,000 years ago. It was the first time drones have been used to discover prehistoric cave paintings. For the last 40 years, archaeologists studying at the University of Alicante have been doing a lot of hiking. The area around Alicante is rugged and mountainous. The mountains are dotted with dark and mysterious caves and caverns. The only way to access them has been by foot. So, students pack up their gear and march up the mountainside in search of lost history. 
If you're into hiking and beautiful views, you couldn't ask for a better field trip. Now, instead of hiking up the mountains, students can send drones to peek into the doorways of dark caves. During their most recent survey, they entered 18 caves with their drones. Two of them contained prehistoric cave paintings. The paintings are of strange human figures, along with deer and goats and hunting scenes. They aren't particularly big or shocking, but they date back 7,000 years. And to think that the ancient art was found using a tiny remote controlled helicopter. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. Nazca Lines of Mid East. Many of us are familiar with the Nazca Lines in Peru, but not a lot of people have heard of the even more mysterious lines located in the Middle East. Stretching from Syria to Saudi Arabia are curious lines etched into the ground, just like the Nazca Lines. However, rather than monsters, animals, or human-like figures, these ancient geoglyphs are in the shape of circles and often resemble primitive wheels. But what's truly fascinating is that they number in the thousands. They are difficult to see, and knowledge of them has been limited since they can only be seen from the air. Pilots reported these strange circular patterns as far back as the 1920s, but now those studying the circular glyphs have used new satellite mapping technologies to allow researchers to take photographs from above. Now researchers are attempting to understand the purpose of these mysterious wheels and who could have carved them into the Earth. First of all, the geoglyphs date back to at least 2,000 years ago. They can be found throughout desert fields and range in size from 82 to 230 feet across. David Kennedy with the University of Western Australia says that in the country of Jordan alone, there are more geoglyphs than there are in all of Peru. Kennedy also says these geoglyphs probably had a useful purpose. Nobody's entirely sure what the wheels were for, but there are other geoglyphs called kites that were used for hunting and killing animals. These were basically stone passages that animals would be funneled through until they hit a bottleneck, at which point they would be more effectively slaughtered. As for who built them, that's a bit more mysterious. Some of these structures are so old they date back to 9,000 years ago. That means it's a bit tough to narrow down exactly which civilization was responsible for building the geoglyphs. Lost Afghanistan For many years, Afghanistan has been one of the most difficult places for archaeologists to investigate. This is a huge loss for everyone, because Afghanistan is one of the most fascinating countries in the world. For thousands of years, empires rose and fell in what is today a hard place to get to, to say the least. But just because archaeologists can't go in and investigate physically doesn't mean they can't still gather information. The U.S. Department of State has actually helped archaeologists analyze data taken from spy satellites during the Cold War. Spy satellites, military drones, and commercial satellite data have been used to offer an unprecedented view of archaeological sites that are too dangerous for people to actually visit. Images have been taken of the walled city of Sar Otar, built back around 2,000 years ago. Archaeologists have also found over 119 buildings from between the 16th and 17th centuries. These were huge mud brick structures that housed hundreds of people in the desert like miniature settlements. There would usually be one of these desert fortresses about every 10 miles or so, or at least a day's journey. They allowed trading caravans to rest in safety instead of having to camp in the desert. Sadly, though, it's still almost impossible for archaeologists to get boots on the ground and excavate. For now, all they have are satellite images of over a thousand ancient cities and villages, along with records from archaeologists who have come out of retirement to share the work they were able to accomplish in the past to supplement the aerial images. Saxon Coins and Google Earth A man with a metal detector has been using satellite images from Google Earth to find buried treasure. His name is Peter Welch, and he has been an amateur metal detecting enthusiast for decades. But once he started using Google Earth, his success rate went through the roof. He now uses Google to research farmland so that he doesn't have to just wander around aimlessly looking for treasure. And in December of 2014, he used clues from Google Earth to mark a particular spot that looked intriguing in a local field. When he went there with his metal detector, he found a cache of Saxon coins worth over $1.5 million. It turned into one of the biggest treasure discoveries in British history. But sadly for Peter, he didn't get filthy rich. 
Instead, the coins were put on display at the Buckinghamshire County Museum. Drone Archaeology in Kansas A recent drone survey in Kansas discovered something peculiar. The drone found a wide ditch overlooking the Walnut River. The ditch appeared to be some kind of earthwork, but it was only really visible when using thermal imaging. According to Jesse Kasana from Dartmouth College, the bizarre earthwork proves that there are still undiscovered archaeological wonders in the Great Plains region. The earthwork is actually part of a cluster of archaeological sites. The people who once lived here were the ancient ancestors of the Wichita people. Many years before Kansas was taken over by European cattle ranchers and farmers, there was one great settlement and dozens and dozens of small farming villages. They stretched all along the Walnut River starting around the year 900 and being completely erased around 1650. When the Spanish conquistador Juan de Onate marched through the area in 1601, he described a great settlement in Kansas. But that settlement has never been found, and historians say they aren't even completely sure where it may have been. Archaeologists on the ground have found plenty of evidence of Wichita's ancient people. The remains of pit houses, ceremonial burial mounds, and huge enclosed spaces that were looted by treasure hunters in the 1800s. Because of how badly a lot of these sites were pillaged, we don't know what they were even used for. But now, with thermal imaging, archaeologists are able to map more of the area from above, trying to put together a clearer image of what Kansas looked like 1,500 years ago. Hopefully, they'll be able to find the mysterious Great Settlement that's still missing. Did you know there was such a large ancient civilization living in Kansas? Let me know in the comments below! An Ancient Egyptian Capital Sarah Parkhack is something of a space archaeologist. She uses satellites orbiting way above the Earth to find important clues about what is hiding underneath ancient landscapes. Sarah has made a whole lot of discoveries in her life using satellites, including finds in ancient Rome and from the era of the Vikings. She even won a TED Prize in 2016 worth $1 million for her progress in space archaeology. But Sarah's most remarkable find using satellites was an ancient Egyptian capital, lost for 3,000 years. Sarah is responsible for mapping the lost settlement of Tanis back in 2010. It's one of the biggest archaeological sites anywhere in Egypt. But until Sarah came along, only a small fraction of it had been excavated. Tanis was the capital of Egypt for about 350 years during the Middle Kingdom. But after the year 1785 BC, the capital moved to Thebes, and Tanis was basically abandoned. Sarah took photographs from space to get a better idea of what the city looked like in ancient times. Amazingly, she got an almost perfect map of the capital, including streets, suburbs, buildings, ancient temples, and so much more. Using this map, she was able to analyze the city so that surveyors on the ground knew exactly where to search for artifacts. We now know exactly what the city of Tanis looked like and could even recreate it if given the opportunity, all based on information that came from satellite images. Pretty amazing! Mythical Ireland There's been a lot of interest in recent years of finding unknown archaeological sites in Ireland. Researchers are now using Google Earth to help uncover previously unrecorded sites of interest. This has actually been helped by a recent heat wave. When Ireland experienced one of the worst droughts in years, causing fields of crops to wither and die, the fields were left exposed and bare. When the researchers looked at satellite images during the drought, they found the faint remains of things like ring forts, henges, settlements, and all kinds of other amazing archaeological sites that had never before been seen. This happened in 2018, and it goes to show that in farmlands all across the world, there are thousands of archaeological remains that we simply don't know about. Not until all the crops are gone, and we can actually see the land beneath. One of the first discoveries made was by Anthony Murphy with Mythical Ireland. He discovered an unknown henge near Newgrange that was so impressive it made national news. We don't know what the henge was used for or how old it is, only that the vague remains of it are still around in a random crop field. Have you ever spent time looking into mythical Irish sites or browsed Google Earth images to see if you can spot something yourself? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We have lots more videos like these coming up. The Movement of a Lost Civilization 
NASA satellites have exposed lost civilizations that have been missing for 8,000 years. Not only that, but archaeologists were able to use these satellite images to uncover over 14,000 settlements throughout Syria. The small communities, all 14,000 of them, were invisible, hiding beneath the overgrown landscape of the Middle East. It was NASA's shuttle radar topography mission that finally revealed them. Scientists are saying these hidden communities could prove vital in discovering more about the ancient civilizations that once lived in the area. We're talking about satellite images of basically all of Syria, a huge patch of land. Traditionally, archaeologists would focus on just one or two major cities. But this time, satellite images were used to look at the whole place. That way they could track ancient patterns of human movement to see what was going on thousands of years ago. What they found were all of the settlements that I told you about. But what's really interesting is that some of the largest cities were not located near any source of water. It's led archaeologists to speculate that irrigation may have been an after-effect of urbanization. In other words, controlling water and irrigation helped some remote cities to develop into larger metropolises even though they had no direct fresh water. This would have cleared out the smaller nearby settlements as people funneled to the safety of the cities. Life in the Amazon While the Amazon rainforest may look today like an inhospitable jungle where no civilization ever lived, that's not actually the case. Archaeologists have used satellite images to prove that there was once an ancient civilization thriving here. It's just that there's no physical evidence left of it today, or at least none that's easy to find, because it's hidden underneath the jungle. But footage from drones and pictures from satellites have revealed a massive settlement from before the Spanish ever arrived in South America, dating back to around the year 1250. And it's not the only one. There have been several settlements discovered along the fringes of the Amazon Rim. They don't look like much more than mounds of earth, but they were once small villages. In total, archaeologists say there were at least one million people living here. Christopher Fisher from Colorado State University told the Wall Street Journal that even though most of South America currently looks like pristine forest, much of it is really more of an abandoned garden. What the archaeologists found in the satellite images were geoglyphs and earthworks. They didn't find the remains of castles or fortifications or physical structures we might imagine. They simply found leftover markings on the ground, where huge buildings had once stood. And when they sent archaeologists to these locations to investigate, they discovered pottery shards, broken pieces of stone from forgotten societies, and possible evidence of fortified settlements. This is exciting because nobody really knows what happened to the lost civilizations of the Amazon. They lived far from major rivers, deep in the interior of the jungle, where nobody had anticipated people could thrive. It's a total conundrum that scientists are still working desperately to solve. Croatian Coastal Mystery Archaeologist Mate Perica was looking at satellite images of the Croatian coastline when he came across something strange. Mate is a professor at the University of Zadar, so he's no stranger to archaeological sites. The images he was looking at seemed to show something unnatural on a shallow area of the seabed near the island of Korkula. He was so interested in the mystery and the satellite photos that he took a colleague to the location and went diving. Mate now believes he has stumbled upon a Neolithic settlement built over 6,000 years ago. It would have been constructed in 4500 BC, at a time when the small piece of land was still connected to the mainland. Now it's completely underwater. What Mate and his colleague found beneath the water proves without a doubt that something man-made was here. They found the remnants of stone walls, which had probably once surrounded the settlement. They also found things like flint knives that had probably been used in everyday life. The discovery has been hailed as a big deal for a few major reasons. First of all, most Neolithic settlements are found in caves. This one was an island settlement. Researchers can't figure out why people 6,000 years ago went through all the trouble of creating their tiny island village instead of hiding out in the safety of a cave. Ancient Alabama the site of a prehistoric village in Alabama may have just been discovered thanks to satellite images. According to researchers, the village is the place where the Spanish conquistador Hernández de Soto fought an epic battle 500 years ago. 
Historical records from back then prove that there was definitely an epic battle fought somewhere in Alabama, but nobody has been able to discover its location until now. Archaeologist Charles E. Moore used satellite images to look across Mobile County. He was looking for fire-hardened clay. This is because Hernández de Soto allegedly burned the battlefield back in October of 1540. After 200 Spaniards died and 2,500 indigenous people were killed, the site of the battle was scorched. And even though this may sound like an obvious victory for the Spanish, the truth is that most of his force was wiped out. He was left with very few soldiers, stuck in enemy territory with who knew how many more people waiting to attack. He then headed west and became the first European to ever see the Mississippi River. On May 21, 1542, De Soto died on the bank of the Mississippi from a fever. As for the battlefield, it hasn't been 100% confirmed as discovered just yet. Archaeologists simply know that they found a large area of fire-hardened clay in Mobile County that could be the right location. And all thanks to satellite images. Thanks for watching! Have you ever tried to find something amazing or unusual on Google Earth? Let me know in the comments below! Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon. Bye!